Guys, look what I made. A big springy pile of paintings. This is my annual breakdown of all the pieces I did this October for Peachtober. Peachtober is the October prompt list that I started probably like six or seven years ago, maybe six years ago, and have been doing ever since. And honestly, wow, so glad I did it on a whim that time. <laughs> Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you want to design and build a beautiful website, you can do it all in one place with Squarespace. So we're just going to jump straight into it because it is a 31 painting video. It's at least going to be 31 minutes because I, I don't know if I can do more than like less than a minute for each painting, but I'm going to try my best and I might get out of breath and I'm sorry about that. And I speak really fast already. And I will try and speak slow, but not for this video because we don't have time. So <laughs> anyway, let's begin with day one. Day one was B. I put this project in here because I had an idea for a painting. And that was like a swarm of bees above a girl's head where she's walking through like some sort of landscape. But she's like really contemplating because it was just kind of like taking a walk to quiet your swarm of buzzing thoughts. That was the entire idea of this piece. This was one of the first pieces that I experimented with texture, which is something that I explore a lot more deeply throughout Peachtober this year. These really dark colors and having the underpainting paint peek through is like a big thing that I tried this year. I don't know what, what else to say about this painting, but I was clearly setting this, the bar pretty high because of how complex the background was. So definitely starting off with a bang, but I love this piece. I love the concept. If there's one thing I could change, I'd maybe like change the eye a bit because I just don't love it. But I can see that the paint is quite thick. I hadn't yet got the hang of doing gradients with acrylic gouache which is something they usually do with acrylic ink so it improves throughout the month we're just going to move straight on to cosmos so cosmos was either the cosmos is in like the universe and there's the cosmos is in like the flower um, and i did both so i did the entire cosmos holding like a cosmos flower and the idea is that something as big as the universe can find pleasure in something as small as like a flower that just appears on earth like it's like its favorite plant in the whole of the universe or the whole of himself is like the humble cosmos, which I thought was really, really cute. Initially, I was just gonna do like the universe, like it personify the universe, but I decided to give him a flower in the end because I just thought it was so cute. I think what I would have done with this one is I wish I explored texture a little bit more, like in the way that I did later on in the month. But other than that, I think it's really, really cute. Maybe the color palette could have changed, but I love the idea. I love his little face, like the crazy eyes. And of course, I always love doing stars. Next, we have Sweet. Sweet, I have finally got a chance to paint one of my teeth or one of my tooth, a tooth. This is sweet tooth, obviously, sweet tooth. And this is a cavity struck tooth holding a candy and they're both really, really happy. I just like the idea of like, I still love this idea of making a, making branding for like a fake dental office that like specializes in sweet tooth people, sweet teeth. Um, because it's just like, don't be ashamed of your cavities. Just like, come here and fix them. You have as many sweets as you want. You know, when you go to the dentist, like, don't have too much soda, don't have this. This dentist is like, do whatever you want. I'll fix whatever you want. <laughs> also, there's going to be backgrounds for all of these paintings. So this year, the things that I experimented with, or like the format is like full blown backgrounds or like full frame backgrounds and using texture and stuff like that and layering. But this is the one that the only one in the bunch that has dodgy paper as the background, but I think it has like a really, really nice effect. So I love this like dentist blue. Next we have Grub. I love this one. This one is like quite reminiscent of, it might've been Tulip from a couple of years ago. Similar girl, similar background. I mean, it's to be expected since I'm painting from the same universe, but I just love, I, I sketched this girl holding this little grub in like two seconds. And I was like, this is it. This is what I'm going with. That was like part of my advice for this year was just like, when you find an idea that brings you joy, like go for it. And I think it really helped because I just love this little freaking grub. So cute. I love her red boots. I wish they were slightly less pointy, but I do love them. And I love this patchiness that I started playing with here on the grass. I feel like that is something that reoccurred a lot during Peach Trope, but like big blocks of solid color. Like if it's just green, it's lots of different types of green. If it's just like blue, it's lots of diff different types of blue. Something I really, really like. And this color palette, I love. Okay, next is Sprig. Sprig is like a little twig or branch. I just like had this idea of a stack of rocks and the top rock like holding a sprig like a vase. I just used it as an opportunity to draw this stack of rocks that actually appears a couple of times during these, these series of paintings. You can see here that I'm doing like this texture again on the bark of the tree, like allowing that pink to pop through a darker color, which is something that I really love doing. I love these pink highlights, pink and yellow highlights. Here I'm using like blue, blue to yellow gradient in the sky, but 
After think I think this point I pretty exclusively use yellow and pink as the underpainting, which I've actually come to really love as just like the base colors that I use all the time. Next we have eye. The idea, <laughs> the idea behind this piece is like the moment an idea comes into fruition or like comes into the forefront of your mind. I feel like the best ideas feel like they come out of nowhere. And so this is like the exact moment that that happens. It's kind of from like the back of your mind quickly to the front. And I just thought a shooting star coming from the back of your mind to the front in like a floating space is a good illustration of that. So I did like try and focus on her eye and try and make it like um, really colorful, but I think I could have made it more of a focus somehow. Maybe if I exaggerated even further, but it is quite exaggerated already. This is the last time that I use ink in as like a full background. Next we have Crater. So this one took a long time actually. It took a long time to nail this like glowy green. It may not look like it with the sped up reels and stuff every day, but it did take a, quite a while. I did this like crater of space cereal because when I look up the definition of a crater, it's like a bowl shape, something, something. And I was like, bowl? A bowl of cereal. And then the cereal is going to be star shaped. It's like, just like with this prompt, the ideas come quite quickly and fully formed. And then the last minute decision to put the little green guys in because I wanted like a light source to have like interesting lighting on her. Purple and green is not like a combination I do a lot, but I had fun exploring it. Will I use it again frequently? Probably not, but I had fun exploring it. That's for sure. And I love her boots. They're like those Astro Boy. What were those? Is it like mischief or whatever? Those red boots, big red boots. Next is Dream. I love the concept for this piece. The execution, I'm like, maybe it could be better. But the idea is that you can rest assured that where you are now is the dream that your dream was having when you began. Where I am now, my dream wouldn't, like I wouldn't have even dreamed of it. So it's like the dream my dream was having. Do you know what I mean? You dreaming of yourself, dreaming of yourself. I feel like sometimes we look too far ahead or we don't like celebrate where we are or we don't celebrate our achievements once we, or milestones once we reach them because we're just like onto the next thing, onto the next thing. But it's like, like kind of about like stopping for a second and like taking it all in and just being like, appreciative of how far you've come because I don't think we do that enough, you know? Okay, next is blue. And this is where the texture gets, like this is where I start experimenting with texture a lot. This one is one of my favorites as well, which is actually a surprise because I was gonna draw a sad person and I don't really draw sad people or sad characters that much. And I thought that's cause I didn't really want like sadness to infiltrate the world that my work lives within, but honestly, like it's fine to be sad. And I think a big thing I'm focusing on at the moment is accepting like emotions and not feeling ashamed of like negative emotions. And so this is like kind of that portraying it in the world that my work lives within is like the first step for that. And I just feel like it's honestly kind of sweet. I love that she's, you know, feeling, filling her hair with like tears and then the mountains are like a sad with her and like her being sad, like paints the whole landscape sad. And it's like not bad. It's just an emotion, you know? I love this piece. I love the gradient in the underpainting of the sky. So like the clouds and the stars. I love letting that like pink peek through the mountains. And I honestly, that was just like on a whim. So I use the prompt as inspiration for the subject matter, but I also use the prompt as inspiration for the color palette. And I did that a couple of times this month, like for blush, for citrus. I really love doing that. This is the first time I also did these like glowy stars, which appear a lot, a lot, a lot this month because I loved doing it. So that's a breakthrough. The texture is a breakthrough and the way that I layer the sky for the stars is a breakthrough. And also the way that I'm like doing the underpainting, not just grading from top to bottom, but like more specks in between. Next we have citrus. So citrus, as I said, was another one that I, the palette was inspired by the prompt as well as the subject matter. I love her. She's so cute with her cute little outfit and like her cheeky look on her face but also like the orange is so cute. Oh my God, and she's just in an orchard. What is she gonna do with this orange? Is she gonna eat it? Because it has a personality. Smiling at her. I don't think she'll eat it. Maybe she's just gonna take it on an adventure. Wait, what did I say? All right, this was like at the start of the month. I said, the world is your orchard, so pick the sweetest fruit and make friends with all the bugs. That, some of the pieces have less of like a huge backstory this, this year. And I just think there's something nice about the simplicity of them. Some people were like, oh yeah, that makes so much more sense than the world is your oyster. But I'm like, eh. I'm a genius. <laughs> I love like her outfit. I'm thinking of trying to incorporate more complex outfits into my work because I think it just adds so much more personality. I express myself through my fashion. I feel like so should my characters, if that's 
how I operate. Next we have pencil. This is the stack of rocks appearing again. Obviously all of our favorite bug friends are here. Was I meant to do a caterpillar on the other side? Oh no, there's one under below. I thought I was supposed to do it up on the right side. I love when my characters are like, there's certain visual elements that are imitated in both characters because it shows like, I think a sense of like kinship. You know how like friends influence each other? I think it's like a bit like that. You've got the stack of rocks with the moss on the top and then you've got like the flower growing out of the top and then you've got the girl with like, she's got her stack of buns and there's like a flower placed on the top there. And I think that's just really cute. It's also like mirroring, you know, when you're like, socializing with someone you're like a generous socializer you'll mirror people's like um what's it called gestures and stuff automatically i just think it's like similar to that i love that she's in like a precarious location she's on like a, a mossy log over like a cliff she's surrounded by bugs like these bugs make a lot of appearances i think it's just like i think part of like having a world is just like having a lot of fauna and flora that repeats itself throughout different environments Next is Nest. This one was one of the ones that I wanted to keep a bit more simple. Obviously there's like a lot of stars and stuff, but the concept is pretty simple and it honestly was pretty fast to finish. If I could change something, I probably wouldn't have green and yellow as the underpainting. I would probably have just kept it pink and yellow throughout actually all of these, but that's only something that I just finalized like maybe midway through. I love having like the tree hole and like the smashed out shape and like caves with like eyes inside i think it's really mysterious it's cute that something lives inside something so this is just like a repetition of that love playing with scale always and this is just like an example of that and just like a really really simple nighttime scene and like my negative painting in the background this is obviously like still playing with this as opposed to going the full thing that i explored this this year but yeah, this one's not one of my favorites, but I still like it. I still think it has personality. I still like the color palette, but yeah, I don't think it's as clever as an idea. That's by design. It was kind of like one of the pieces that I wanted to be a lot faster because I wanted to start getting way ahead so that I can make videos like this, do my reels, get ready to go to Singapore, which I'm gonna do in a bit. Okay, next is ship. This one, I really worked hard on the um, concept. I initially had this idea that like, it could be like a sleepy harbor scene. So having like the ship, which was like, I used Titanic as a reference, but obviously like squished it in and like bent the, I don't know what they call, are they spires? I don't know what a spire is. The thing where the smoke comes out. And so the smoke, um, the smoke is like Z's. So the ship is sleeping, the mountains are sleeping in the background and all of the fish and the whale and the dolphin in the ocean is sleeping too. I just like this idea of like this harmony of everyone's doing the same thing or like everyone like coexists in a, in a peaceful way. And it's just like such a peaceful, sweet scene. This is also one of the first times I was using this um, underpainting to like allowing the underpainting to really come through in the ocean and the water scenes. And that's something that I'm gonna implement in the future because I really think it has that effect of like moonlight or sunlight coming through the water and creating those beautiful colors. I think it's like creates a lot of rhythm and movement. I like the concept more than the execution, but I don't hate the execution either. Next is garden. This one, I like the idea of, I love the idea of going to a local park and just like plucking down and this is your garden. Do you know what I mean? It's just like kind of that hopeful and positive outlook. You know, you can like plunk down on a bit of earth and if you actually pay attention to what's happening in such a small space, those really small things become really big. When you focus on like the the whole expansive universe, your situation and yourself becomes really, really small. I always like to think that like I'm just a speck. It honestly makes me feel better. I think it would be, I know that it, some of my friends, it gives them existential crises, but for me that makes me feel calm because it's like no matter how bad I do or like, no matter how bad it gets, I am just a speck, I'll be gone soon and like whatever. It's not that serious. <laughs> oh yeah, and I love that like this puddle becomes like an entire lake and the the caterpillar becomes like this giant thing and like these plants can become trees, you know what I mean? Obviously there are some trees there, but it's just to illustrate that point. Next, this is one of my, another one of my faves. This is for weather. This one is very concept heavy. I also love the execution and it honestly came pretty easily. I did this one pretty fast. Actually, this is like one of my favorites for the the year i think um or for the month this was weather so the idea behind this is it's like a little it's like she's a farmer and she's taking care of like plants whether it be like her own crops or is it like a plant daycare center where all of your plants needs are specific to your single plant so they have like weather for your plant if your plant needs water they put a little rain cloud on top if your plant needs light they put 
or sunshine, they put like a little sun on top of it. If your plant needs shade, they put a cloud on top of it. If your plant needs frost, for some strange reason, they have a little snowflake. You know what I mean? I just love the, this idea. I love the background as well. It's like simple enough, but you really get like an expansive look at like the landscape behind. So you, get, you see the barn, you see the trees, and you see like the other crops behind. Love the color pal palette. It's something I tried to emulate in a different piece, but it di wasn't as successful. Something that I'll have to keep working on, but I love it. I love the character. I love the concept. Like it really is just so delightful. Oh, and new plant unlocked. See in the bottom left corner, the little plant bud, the new plant unlocked. I've got my, all my other four flowers. This is a new one. Prepare to see her more. Next we have Sidekick, a homage to my Fox paintings of the Tumblr era or post, just just after post Tumblr era. I actually, if you don't know, if you haven't been following me that long, I used to paint a lot of foxes, like a lot. Yeah, I just love painting foxes. I feel like, I actually love painting animals in general. I feel like it's not that hard to figure out how to draw them once you do some studies and then simplifying it is fine. This one was a little bit harder. I couldn't get it on my on my tablet, which is really weird, but I did get it. So I just got a scrap of paper. When it's not working on your tablet, I suggest like grabbing a scrap of paper and trying to do it traditionally. I got the shape here and then I took a photo of this, then put it underneath my uh, layer on my iPad and digitally traced it. Um, anyway, so love the underpainting of this piece. I wanted to fo focus heavily on these oranges because I knew that I wanted to let, actually I did, I know. I thought I might want to let the like underpainting peek through for the fox's skin. And this is actually the first one I did where I let a big portion of the underpainting peek through as like a rendering effect rather than just like an underpainting and edge lighting effect. This is something that I do more later. So that's the beginning of that. I love the simplicity of like this mountain just behind them, creating like complexity with like the scratchy dry brushing. I love the composition of the stars around her hair and around the landscape. I think it's like nice for them to be so specifically placed rather than completely ever and I think that's what I'm going to do moving forward too yeah I love her hair I don't know if I if I was going to do this again if I'd have that straight cut um because I think it's like not it's quite unlike the rest of my characters like a lot of my characters are very blobby very friendly shapes like very friendly round shapes rather than like harsh lines but yeah I like her. I like her face I like the, this duo. I love like animal person duos. I think it's just like so adventure filled and something that like, you know, when you have a childhood pet, I don't know what that's like because I didn't really have a childhood pet when I was a kid. But like you can go on adventures together. There's like a lot of imagination, a lot of nostalgia around these like animal person duos. Next we have blush. This one is not my favorite execution wise. I like the idea in relation to the prompt. So the idea was essentially this portion of the painting. And it was just like that kind of love me, love me not. You like do one of those flowers and then it's like loves me. And then you're just like sitting here like just blushing. It's that moment that it's capturing. Um, I wanted to also be inspired by the word blush in the landscape. I think it could have been more effective had I cut the oranges out of the back. But I just love this palette of like pinks and oranges. I have the birds and the bees in the tree because it's just like, you know, Little crush, gotta learn about that stuff. You got all the usual suspects, the flowers and the bugs, and the eyes peeking out of like the hollow of the tree and the friendly tree also. It's just like a friendly scene, you know? And it's it's fun to experiment with like interesting and different palettes. Do I want like a pink landscape? No, I don't think the grass should be pink, but it's like kind of something that happens when it's like sunset, if you know what I mean. It's like the landscape is colored with like the sunset. Not my favorite, but still cute. This one is one of my favorites. So this is Snooze. This is another piece where I've left the underpainting. See the, the center of the flower that she's lying on? That's completely the underpainting, letting it that peek through. And I think that ties like her with like these stars in the background and all of the edge lighting that is created when you, when I leave like a little space between like the subject and the background. I love that the star creates this, um, like her hair and like the top of her eyes and her eyebrows creates a star shape. So I just played with that by like just completely making it glowing. I love it. It's so for, for how simple it is, I really, really love it. Sometimes I'm not, I'm not a big fan of like the really easy to paint pieces. Maybe I just, maybe it's like internalized and it's just like, oh, I feel like it's lazy or something. But yeah, I really love it. I love her fit. I love her little pose. I just made it up. I don't know if it's anatomically correct. Don't tell me if it is or not. I don't want to know. I love it. And I love playing with scale as per usual. Next we have Candle. So this is officially now, I will say, one of the partner props for this year. I actually like cut the partner props this year because I'm like, people don't care. Like people don't care about the partner props. Like I just, that was just an assumption I was making because I just felt like 
they were always really hard for people to, to do or people would struggle more with them because maybe I was making effort to do to get them to be partner prompts rather than thinking about what would actually be like inspiring. We had like, for example, rise and fall, warm and cool. This one was candle and bulb. Um, I didn't think this was the partner prompts because I just didn't know I accidentally put them similar, like um, similar definition words together on the prompt list. And some of you were like, oh, that's the partner prompts. I'm like, yeah, that'll be the partner prompts. And I was actually pleased to find out that people do look forward to the partner prompts. They do enjoy the partner prompts. So I will be doing them next year. What will they be? Who's to say? I've just finished Peeptober, please. Give me a break. First is candle. This is an idea I had. Honestly, it's a bit dark and honestly, people were disturbed by this a little bit. I didn't mean for it to be so disturbing. I guess it is because not all the faces in like the melted section are happy. It actually is quite morbid actually now that I think about it. But it's like these two candles, they're like in love, like sh almost sharing, all their flames are almost touching. They're like leaning into each other, happy. And then underneath them is like a melted version of like people thought it was their friends. I thought it was just like future, like past generations or something like, like, the, like an inverted family tree or something like that. Except, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking, but I just thought it made sense. But then afterwards, people were like a bit disturbed in my comments. I was like, oh, it is a bit disturbing, sorry. Disturbed is not a feeling I want anyone to feel. So noted for future. Be careful with those simple, simplified faces. They can become, make the situation very disturbing. Noted, but yeah, I, another example of these textures here. I tried to be like painterly in the base, but I think I don't love how contrasted or complementary that the colors are i wish they were just like more similar maybe if i did like a wash of white over the top it would like fix that but hindsight is 2020 and it's time to move on to bulb <laughs> with my partner props i try and get them to like i usually try and make them very visually similar these ones are not visually similar but there's two characters like leaning in towards each other so this i chose to be inspired by flower bulbs as opposed to light bulbs which is something that i think that i expected a lot of people to to choose but it's like some people do do fly balls as well you know a relationship where on the surface you're fighting but deep down you like are in love or love each other so like it could be like a sibling relationship a lot of people thought that that's what it was and i was like yeah it really resembles that where you're you might on the surface be like not the best of friends in that moment but deep down like you love each other simplified background i don't love the palette i think i could have done better but it was like a rushed piece i was just trying to make sure that i was ahead because i didn't want to fall behind you know i love the little roots holding hands though i think it's really really cute next we have slingshot this one is definitely not my favorite i love the I love the idea. I love the sketch. I just think the color palette and the execution is not as good as it could have been. Could I blow it up into a bigger piece later? Yeah, maybe I could. I think I might, but for now, like it's not as bad. Once I had them scanned, I really like appreciated them a lot more. I think a lesson that I learned this year is like trust yourself and like your taste or at least your, your um, automatic drawing or like what you are inclined to draw is your style so having faith that it would just be fine even if you didn't love it at first because i did like the first layer of purple for the skin i was like oh no this isn't gonna be good it did cross my mind to start again but every time i had that thought i was like no and i think that's something that pulled me through a lot this year like and have, has left me like not feeling burnt out has left me feeling really positive has left me ready to move on to the next thing straight away i love her stance i love her boots i love the perspective of her boots i love her fit i love her hair i love her I think what I would change is maybe the color palette and like the way that I applied the paint. But other than that, like it's fine. It's a cute painting and I'll give myself that. <laughs> I don't love the color palette. I wish it wasn't like such typical complementary colors. I think it needed like a, a middle color, maybe like a cyan instead of like a deep ultramarine blue. Next we have Tunnel and Tunnel is not my favorite. <laughs> I don't mind the color palette. Like, I don't mind the various elements. I just don't think they hit as much as like some of the other ones that I loved this month. Okay, so if you don't live in Sydney and you don't live in Australia, you may not know like what I'm talking about. Although I think it is based on something internationally, but we have this theme park here called Luna Park. It is like a potentially art deco theme park. It's like the only theme park we have in Sydney. It's right on the harbor, like right next to the harbor bridge, but it's like not that fun. Every time you go, you're kind of like, oh, it's the same as it was like 10 years ago. And there's not that many roller coasters, but there are lines and the food is expensive. And like the, can I just say the mascots? Like not the best. They don't have any licensed stuff, like no Looney Tunes, no Disney, blah, 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 which is fine. 
but they've got this giant head at the front, which is kind of spooky. I want it to like emulate that. And I want it to be like a horror night kind of thing, but it's like, instead of anything overtly scary, it's just because the demographic is fruit. It's like the fruit salad gang going into for a night of frights at like this theme park. The head is the scary part because obviously humans eat fruit. I think there's something that could have been changed and I don't really quite know what it could be. Maybe the color palette, maybe it should have just been blue or green. I think maybe like the bottom should have just been blue. If I was going to change it now, I think I'd do that. So let me check. Yeah, I think it wouldn't have been so bad if like the trees and the grass w were just like a bluey, a very turquoise blue. I think then it would have pulled it all together. I like having like a, a lot of one color and like a pop of a complementary color. This is like blue, green and pink and it's just I think too much and the fruit salad gang might appear again who's to say next is one of my favorite pieces this is message I knew immediately I wanted to do like smoke signals for message um I did have a sketch that was like in a bottle and I, do, I actually knew immediately that I wanted to have like the like phone message like whatsappy iMessagey bubbles as like the message so in a in a really irregular place so whether it be in a bottle having those message bubbles or as smoke signals having those message bubbles and I thought it was more clever to have smoke signals as message bubbles. Initially I was going to do two little campfires but I thought it'd be cuter to have the houses because it's such a reoccurring um, motif in my work. Initially it was just going to be on flat but then I'm like they could just talk to each other so then instead I put like a big mountain in between like the face of the mountain is just like completely oblivious to what's happening around them. Turned it like an ice like opposite opposing isometric not isometric I don't know what the word is because it's not fully isometric but like the corners face towards so they have completely different lighting and I think I like nailed the lighting on them even though it's like a very simple shape I'm not like trying to say I'm incredible I think I nailed the lighting people were saying it's very like Sean Tan and I think the reason it is that is because it's pretty painterly there there's more earthy tones well like pe people as in one person and I'm like I, I see it did I mean to no um and something that I did with this is usually I'll like bump the contrast up in post but I really liked how low contrast contrast it was in the end so I just decided to leave it like that and honestly I think it looks pretty sophisticated I love like the idea that it's portraying and I just love this piece I don't think this is like going to be a fan favorite I don't know if you guys will like it as much as I do but personally I always like the ones that other people don't like so for me love this I think I'm going to use it as reference for something for like the style moving forward if I can just like move it towards more this style also playing with transparency here, which is really cute. Next we have one. This is another one of my favorites. I think I was like really on a roll here. I think for when I did weather and sidekick and this and this, it's just like, you can just tell I'm on a roll when I do like multiple pieces that I really, really love in a row. So Wanda experimented with like a lot of different like, like sizes of wand. I had like someone riding a wand like a broomstick. I had someone holding one like a staff. And then this one is like a very, very small one. So I initially knew that I wanted there to be like a little mage, which was like a frog resting on her knee. And then she was getting lessons from this frog mage and obviously like the the wand is tiny because it's the mage's wand and she's learning with his wand i love the addition of the potion on her knee and i like her little details like her bow and her hat and stuff like that and her accessories this is also another example of me leaving the underpainting to peek through and i think it adds a really nice effect and a really dynamic effect to something that's essentially just like a like a block color it looks like she has tie-dye boots and tie-dye jumper and I, I love that and I think leaving it there really further accentuates the other parts of the painting where it peeks through which is like the edge, edges of the subject matter and the tree but yeah if I could change one thing I would like outline the hat of the frog a little more because I think it gets lost because I've like used a pencil to go boop, 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 boop. anyway I love her side profile I think that I love I love the way I draw side profiles more than I love when I do front on so that's something that I'm gonna have to address because I don't want to do that I want to love them both equally you know next is coral this one I just love the idea of like repetition of shapes and so this was just a little spiky sea scape in the shallows so we've got the puffer fish here which is like super super simplified which is just like a couple of features the fins the tail and the spiky body we've got the sun which is a similar spiky shape we've got the coral which is a spiky shape and like the same rendering as puffer fish and we've got like the starfish which are also spiky and the sea urchins which are also spiky is it my favorite no do i like this i really like this like cyanish sky blue like blue pink orange red color scheme like i it's something that i've really really fallen in love with this month and it's something that i'm going to do you'll see like next year because i really like it this one is purely like decorative 
there's no there's not much of a narrative here it's just kind of like you know all the spiky creatures are out at the same time awake and happy next we have ladybug so this one is another simple piece but one that i think is effective and i really really like it i just had the idea that like a ladybird was sitting on a leaf that it had eaten and the spots you know when like bugs take bites out of plants and they're just perfect circles or at least they're portrayed like this in children's books maybe like i'm just not looking at real life and i'm only looking thinking of like how it's been illustrated over time but like the bites are perfectly in line with the spots of the ladybug that's what i wanted to do simple concept pretty simple execution but i think it's like pretty effective very graphic sometimes it's nice to sway in and out of like how graphic and how um illustrative something is love the color scheme love this dark blacky blue background next is pond this one is not my fave, not my least fave. I can't figure out how I feel about this. I like the sky. I love the amount of texture, like the tree in the sky and her hair. I like that I love the pond and I like the rocks. Is she perfect? No. Could the eyes and the mouth of the frog be darker? Yes. Is it the end of the world? No. Could there be more flowers? Yes. I like that I've reintroduced that hill with the, that little tree on it that was first appeared in Message. I love repeating elements because i just think it builds out the universe that my work lives within but like i you know what i think it is it's the fact that i don't fully love my portraits of people front on we really need to address this but i do think she's really cute and i love her leaf hat and i love the, the frog i love it's the best frog i've ever drawn as in like the cutest color palette wise yeah i like it could be better yeah the color palette can always be better but we can't tweak forever you know what i mean next we have chomp so Chomp is another simple one. I actually did this one when I was doing Ladybug, like right after I did Ladybug and Chomp in the same day. You can probably see the similarities. Simple, bad apple, good vibes. I love like this pink lady-esque patterning in the apple. I love apples, I love fruit, and I love like cheeky characters. So I just thought it was really fun. Um, the underpainting is the unusual part here because it doesn't really have, it has a lot of light pinks and some oranges and i think that just peeks through so nicely i don't know what it is about it just really it's different to to um ladybug ladybug has a lot of dark pinks and they kind of appear as red when it's like when it's added contrast with like the the painting on top but this maintains that pink and it's just something so like pleasurable about it to look at i don't know i like it this one i love this one is float i love this in the way that i love message i think i really tried to emulate what I loved about message in this piece. And I do think I succeeded. I, I needed to differentiate like the colors of each float. And I wanted to be like the a host of characters that are really, really familiar to me and to my work, which is like the motifs that appear a lot of my work. We've got the mountain with a flag on top, dandelion. We've got an apple, not a bad apple, good apple. We've got a forest with all the trees that are familiar to us. We've got a little home, we've got a cloud, and we've got like the, the um, waratarish type flower there's a decision i made at the very end where i like because i left the underpainting of this pathway oh and p.s the idea is that this isn't the actual um parade this is the rehearsal which is why there's no people i don't know i feel like the rehearsals are more fun because you're not as nervous or something but anyway i left i left the road in the way that i did for some of the other pieces and left the underpainting to come through but i thought it was a little bit strong for like what i wanted for this piece so i painted over it with like a beige in a very th thin wash by the way just so that it muted it a little bit and i think that was the right decision so i'm happy i did that if i'm gonna say what i hate and what i should have changed i'm also gonna say what i liked and that i'm glad i did but yeah i like this piece it's super simple but like very effective it has that hazy little like nostalgic sepia photo vibe even though it's like completely colored something about it i don't know if you you understand what i mean but i think some of you just tell me if you do just tell me you do <laughs> okay second last one this is for moss this is not my fave because i feel like it doesn't address like the prompt in an interesting way or it doesn't approach the prompt in an interesting way but this is the very end of like a month of painting so i'm allowed to have like one that's just a bit lazy you know what i mean i just drew a mossy the moss is a per has a personality and the rock has a personality and it's like the life of the party like all the creatures in the forest are there we've got a new creature unlocked we've got the worm on the right we've got the flowers looking at all the creatures like everyone's interacting and like the caterpillar and the snail on the top having a munch on an apple and we've got those trees with like their half of their faces showing at the top i just think it's like a fun like very lively forest scene i like the color palette too moss is not as much the focus here but that's fine and last but not least we have spooky this one i was i was like should i do a skeleton or something like should i do like a typical monster character that's very like halloweenish but in the end i was just like you know what i'm doing a haunted house i'm doing a house that's like may not be haunted but it like you know the kids in the neighborhood think it is like it's like home alone and to kill a mockingbird like there's that one person in the neighborhood that the kid's like oh my god that person's evil 
that person's scary. They have all this lore, but really they're just like a normal nice person. That's the idea. It's like a spooky house that would be the place that the kids are really scared of, but really it's just like a regular nice person living there. I love like paintings where I've done them in the past and when I see them, I'm like, oh, gotta do more of those. It's like a very, very blue painting with like just a, a few sources of light that are like very warm. I love the scale of like this giant steep mountain covered in trees and just like the building on the top. That's it, everyone. This year was wild. Like, as I said in my last video, you saw like my day in the life of Peachtober edition. It was wild. I feel like so good still. I'm ready to move on. I'm like about to pack to go to Singapore. I am gonna start working on this book project. And also I wanna release a Peachtober drop in mid-November. I spoke to Chris about it today. I don't think we're gonna, I was like, should I do a zine? Cause a lot of people said they would like like a book or a publication. I don't think we're gonna do that this year. I think I wanna do like a, well, Chris suggested, Chris suggested we do like a I Survive Peachtober tea. So I think that's what I'm gonna design when I'm in Singapore. And then like, hopefully it's amazing. And we'll see if we, we release that. If it's amazing, I'll release it. If not, then of course I'm not gonna release it. I just think it's a fun way to like commemorate like being involved in Peachtober and also like support the challenge. Because it does like, I do set aside a lot of time for it. Also, I just want to, I personally want the shirt. <laughs> we'll see. If it's good, I'll release it. If not, if not, it'll just be like originals or maybe a couple prints. Keep your eyes peeled for that. If you follow me on Instagram, I'll put on some like countdown so you will be in the know. But if we do shirts, it might be more of a pre-order situation. So the people that want them can get them. Cause I know in the past people have been very disappointed when they sell out like really quickly. That's one thing. Another thing is I just want to say like huge thank you to people that are involved in Peachtober. And I don't just mean the people like participating in the challenge. I also mean people like supporting the artists that are involved. Like if you're looking at the hashtag to see what everyone's up to every day, that's like a big part of Peachtober is like the community around it. And like, I'm honestly like, it's not something that I plan for, nor something that I like, like have a lot of responsibility for. Like, I feel like I don't, like you guys are just supportive of each other. I don't think I'm like doing anything out of the ordinary to make that happen. I think it's just like the nature of my audience, which is so nice. I'm like so grateful for. Yeah, I just loved looking at the hashtag every day. I'm still sharing. I'm like so behind on sharing because I got banned because I posted over a hundred in a day, which is like, I'm not a robot. I'm just like really enthusiastic. <laughs> for the very first day for B, I shared like over a hundred um, pieces in, uh, in, in 24 hours and they like blocked me out of the account for like three or four days. And I didn't know when I would get the account back. So I was like really stressing out. Cause I was like, but it's just the start. Like, how am I going to share everyone's work? I was really stressed out. Um, but it means that it set me back a little bit and I got a little bit too used to going slow with like the sharing, which is fine. I'll just like continue sharing until like I'm finished day 31. But so far I'm only on 12. Anyway, I'm like rambling so much. I'm really sorry. I want to say thank you to you guys for making Peach Show, but what it is, it's like, wouldn't be like the incredible community of artists supporting artists or just people looking at the hashtag supporting art, the artists participating without you guys. I would just be doing it on my own and it wouldn't be as fun if it wasn't for you. The thousands of entries each day for like the same word, but be completely different works is so exciting to me. Like it just, it just is like pure evidence of how creative everyone is and how different like creatives are and like art's oh, just so good. I love Peach Day above. I want to say a big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. As per usual, Squarespace, if you don't know, is an all-in-one platform for building your website. It's the best. It's the one I've been using for all of this time. When I do the Peach Tober store drop, it will be on my Squarespace site. Maybe I'll release a newsletter. That will be with Squarespace. Maybe I'll release a blog post. That will be with Squarespace. The link page that you click on when on my Instagram, that's with Squarespace. Every online part that is not social media is with Squarespace for me. I honestly wholeheartedly recommend it. If you had never tried it before, go to squarespace.com slash fairy little peach. You'll be ecstatic. It's super easy to use and you can create a beautiful website in literally like a few clicks. Could it be easier? No. Cannot wait, as I said, to update my website with my Peach Tober pieces this year. Like it's honestly adding new life to my, my body of work. And it's like really Thank you to you guys for making Peach Over what it is and for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any more questions about materials that I used this year or about the challenge itself, please let me know. If you have any things that you enjoyed about participating, whether it just be like looking at the works every day or participating in the prompt list, I would love to hear it. If you have any things that you learned about your practice or yourself, I would love to hear about that. I'm like so into long form comments. Like I'm so into reading them. I read every single comment. I'm on cloud nine. I'm still like, buzzing and I don't know, it just feels so good. So expect lots of exciting content when I'm back. That's it. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye. Wait, can I show Tonks? Yeah. Tonky, come. Tonks has been in here, but he's just sleeping in his carrier. Tonky.
come here. He's had a big day. Rocket had a shoot and just brought him to the studio. And I woke up and Tonka wasn't in the house. I was like, Tonka, are you hungry? And he did not come. And then I was like looking at the cupboards, looking like under the blanket. And Rocket had told me that he was bringing him to the studio, but I was like half asleep. So I didn't even, I wasn't even conscious. Are you hungry? Hello. Come on. Yay. Let's see if he can do his tricks. Tucky, look. Sit. Good boy. High five. <laughs> High five. <laughs> High five. <laughs> High five. <laughs> You're so cute and I love you so much with all my heart. I love this boy. Look at him eat. He's such a pig. Oh, can I tell the story when you had all that fur on your jacket? Yeah. Look at all this fur. The rocket went to his shoot and this person's like, how many dogs do you have? We only have one short-haired cat. It's called We Don't Use a Lint Roller. <laughs> they probably thought Rocket had two huskies, but he actually just has one little tongs. All right, you've had dinner now. That's enough, my sweetheart. Jesus. He doesn't want to perform. Please, give him some privacy. <laughs> Bye.